All right, we're going to get started. I am the first one of this morning's lectures, uh, and I'm talking about the uh, iris anatomy. So there's just a histologic picture of the iris. So there's two ways to think of anatomy. There's the clinical anatomy and then the, um, the histologic anatomy. So first, let's talk about the clinical anatomy. There's two main zones, the pupillary zone, and that contains the, let's see, which one's the laser again? There we go. The pupil area zone, which contains the rough and uh, the reflected area of posterior pigmented area. And then you have the ciliary zone, which is uh, on the outside of the rough. It contains iris crypts, and they're separated by this collarette, which represents the blood vessels running through the iris. So the uh, other way to look at it is more histologically. There's five layers that we uh, classically talk about, the anterior limiting layer uh, or the anterior border. Uh, and that is um, interrupted by connective tissue that merged with ciliary body. And then there's a stroma, which is sort of the meat of the iris that has melanocytes, um, the vessels, and um, a lot of different things that we'll talk about in more detail. And then the muscular layer, there's the smooth muscle at the pupillary margin and the smooth muscle deep in the iris stroma. You have the anterior uh, pigment epithelium and the posterior pigment epithelium. Here's kind of a uh, cartoon version of this. Uh, so you can see button. Um, this anterior border, uh, the stroma with all blood vessels and uh, then the muscles and the posterior um, pigmented area. So the anterior border is a uh, condensation of fibroblasts and melanocytes. Uh, it's really, really dense. Um, where you have the crypts, it is absent. And uh, from what I read, the reason for that is so that the uh, aqueous humor can more fully bathe the stroma in those, those crypts. Uh, the stroma itself contains pigmented cells, melanocytes, clump cells, fibroblasts, uh, collagen, um, hyaluronic acid, um, blood vessels, and the nerves. Uh, next we have the muscular layer. Uh, this is kind of the bulk of the iris anatomy we get in medical school is that there's the sphincter pupillae and the dilator. Um, dilator is more uh, central, more medial, and the, sphinct excuse me, the sphincter is more medial and the dilator is more lateral, uh, and you can see in this drawing the, um, the way the, the fibers run. Um, they have so smooth muscles, autonomic innervation, uh, and they're derived from the uh, anterior pigment layer of the iris. So I'm just going to touch on this a little bit. I think it's going to be explained in more detail um, when we talk about uh, some of the abnormal findings, but um, the dilator muscles innervation uh, Synthetic innervation, alpha-1 adrenergic stimulation. Uh, it starts in the ipsilateral hyp hypothalamus, uh, synapses uh, to the T1 level of the spinal cord, and then it travels from the spinal cord over the pulmonary apex, which is something we always think about with uh, um, thoracic outlet syndrome and uh, things like that. Uh, and then it runs up the superior cervical ganglion and um, runs along the internal carotid plexus through the cavernous sinus and then through the uh, ophthalmic division of cranial nerve 5 to the dilator muscle. And then there's also some parasympathetic innervation that's inhibitory. <clears throat> the sphincter muscle is parasympathetic, uh, mostly with the muscarinic receptors. Uh, starts in the edinger westfall nucleus, um, runs through cranial nerve 3, through the cavernous sinus, the superior oblique uh, branches to the superior oblique muscle, and synapses in the ciliary ganglion, and it uh, then terminates the short ciliary nerve to the iris sphincter. You can see the sympathetic innervation there that helps uh, inhibit the sphincter muscles. So the anterior pigment uh, myoepithelium, um, specialized myoepithelial cells, uh, the apexes of the anterior and posterior face each other and the bases face out. Uh, it's continuous with the pigmented epithelium of the ciliary body. One thing Dr. Mamos always talks about in path reads is the, the way to, to tell between the iris and the ciliary body is the iris has two pigmented layers that you can't differentiate, whereas the ciliary body just has the one. So this is uh, continuous with the pigmented ciliary body layer. And then you have posterior pigment epithelium. Uh, this is the part you see coming through the pupillary rough that, uh, uh, on, uh, especially people with like, uh, call it, uh, what's it called? Um, pupillary atropion where you can see it coming from uh, posterior to anterior. And so in summary, you have five layers that are important to keep in mind when you're 
think about iris anatomy, the anterior border layer, the iris stroma, the muscles, and the anterior and posterior pigment epithelium.